Since its incorporation as a not-for-profit organization in 1961, the leadership of the Historical Society has always made sharing Elgin's history with the community its top priority. This not only includes the exhibits on display at the museum, but also involves programming and special events that reach beyond the walls of the museum. One such event is the annual cemetery walk held at Bluff City Cemetery on Elgin's southeast side. Today is September 25th, 2011, and we are at the Bluff City Cemetery in Elgin, Illinois, and we are participating in the 24th annual cemetery walk um, put on by the Elgin Area Historical Society Museum. So what we do is we select characters and we research them. So if we select the route first, because we try to do a, a different route each year, then we will walk around and we will look for particular characters. Um, if we have some characters already in mind, we will go and research where they're buried at. And if it's a route that we can do, then we kind of build the route from that point on. Sometimes it only takes one character and we build that route then from just that one character. What we do is we pick out one individual and then build the route around them. As every single light in that theater went dark, and the orchestra stopped playing, pure panic ensued. Mr. and Mrs. Gould went to Chicago to the Iroquois Theater in 1903, and the two of them perished tragically. They were among more than 600 people who died that day. As they opened up the stage doors into the alleyway on that cold, windy December afternoon, the winds came in through the back of the theater, across the stage, grabbed the fire, put them in the fireballs, shot them out underneath the curtain, and incinerated anybody and everything in its path. The terror was indescribable. The noises, the screaming was deafening. People couldn't see anything. They were falling over one another, lest the light of the flames might help for just a brief second. Doors were locked. Windows were barred. There were no exit signs visible anywhere. There was no visible means of anybody fighting this fire in any way, shape, or form. Where the hell are the firemen at? Mr. and Mrs. Gould were interred here in permanent rest, preceded by a church service and a military service of the life that this city had never seen before and probably never will see again. May they rest in peace and the beauty that surrounds them. The way we pick somebody out for a character is to pick out the main character and go around the cemetery in the near vicinity. We happen to see the name of Isabella Nichol, and it said widow of a sea captain or captain who died at sea. We found that to be intriguing and we did a little research, found out that she came to Elgin uh, because her brother lived here. He ran the Ramsey Hotel. She came by ship with five of her children. Actually, she left from Elgin, Scotland, and came to Elgin, Illinois. I purchased a home at 665 Lily Street. The girls were delighted. We were only one block from Lloyd's Park. I received employment from the Elgin Watch Factory and caught the trolley to go to work. The presenters are all volunteers, which we are so grateful to. Uh, many of them have been doing this for many years. We have um, guides that uh, take groups of our guests around from character to character. Along the way, they will talk about different headstones, different styles, um, maybe a particular person, and that kind of helps fill the, the space, too, from one character to the other. This is a four foot stone replica of a log cabin that was built as a memorial to Benjamin Burdett, who died in 1888 at the age of 83. It's one of the most unique monuments here in the Bluff City Cemetery. A short distance from the cabin is the tree that we have broken off at the top. That was placed in honor of Josiah Burdett, Dr. Josiah Burdett, who practiced medicine in Lake County. You can see where it also has 
the uh, birth and death date of himself and his wife, Ellen. We know that it represents an oak tree because of the shelf fungus there very close to the bottom and the fern and other leaves that are there. We're preserving the history of the people who have lived before us here. Many of these people are influential. Many of them were just ordinary people like you and I. But they all have a story to tell. So we're here to preserve their memories, their lives, and their stories. The milestone next year will be our 25th cemetery walk. We hope to go from having six or seven characters to possibly 12 to 15. The cemetery walk is always the fourth Sunday in September. So everybody come on out and see the walk for next year.